So guys, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at Battlefield Basics. I get a lot of questions from you guys asking what sort of terrain should I base? How do I base it? Right through to questions like, I've got lots of scatter pieces. How do you make it so consistent? And the real answer to all this is less is more. So I'm going to show you in this video. All the terrain and models that are featured in this video are brought to you by this video's sponsor, which is Crippled God Foundry. So we've all got bits of terrain knocking around like this. A few trees, a few bits of small spiky terrain like trees or even down to things like this with impaled victims. Stuff like this, I tend to base and make a little terrain piece out of it. So it can represent uneven ground, even like a forest, for example, depending on what sort of game system you're playing. Now, my idea with this is, is I want to make it multi-use. So I'm wanting to build something that represents a forest or uneven ground for, say, Kings of War. Or if we play D&D, skirmish games, it can be more or less anything. So I'm basing this on a decent sized base. I'm using some 3mm plywood, but any baseboard will do, whether that be MDF, EPVC, Fomex, whatever you've got laying around, it will do. Ply is a very good material because it's very strong with it being multi-layered wood. But it can be a bit of a pain to cut, especially if you haven't got any tools. I didn't have the correct blade for cutting ply, so I ended up having to sand it with a generic hand sander. These are very cheap off Amazon, and if you are going to be making a lot of terrain and basing, they're just so handy to have laying around because you can chamfer the edge and any sort of wood that you tear. You can just smooth it out, and it really finishes it off. Now, I like to stick these pieces down because if you was to remove these from bases and things like that, they're the sort of bits of terrain that you're going to lose. With them being small and spiky like that, it's nice to have them on that base, so I just super glue them down with super glue and activator. The one thing to check while you're doing this, though, is make sure that your model can pass through. What I like to do is put the model on a bigger base than it's actually going to be on, and at minimum, just make sure it only just touches. So if you are playing with multiple models on this, you can play on the piece. Now let's get them primed. When doing terrain, I use very cheap primer. As you can tell, the primer is not very good quality, but you get to prime an awful lot for a very little money. And I'll put them primers in the drop down below. Now, all this terrain has been supplied by Cripple God Foundry. And if you are in the market for some awesome scatter terrain, that's undead themed or could even be used for like Badlandy themed or whatever, check out this month's Patreon. This month's Patreon is called the Dead Month Council from Cripple God Foundry. If you really want some decent scatter terrain and some models for your terrain tables or D&D campaigns, things like this are awesome to get, even if it's just for this month, because you're getting an awful lot of scatter pieces and models for just a single payment. But if you do choose to stay with them because you like what they do, you can even get 40% discount off the My Manufacturer to the back catalogue as well. So if there's anything else that you want, just grab it. Me and Cripple Go Foundry have been working together for quite a long time now, and I'll always push them just because most of the releases that do, I actually really like. And if you want to get yourself some awesome undead terrain pieces and some models, all the links will be in the description below. Now, a lot of you guys have been asking about, you don't want to paint your models to like the standard you paint your miniatures, but you want to get your terrain to look pretty decent in a short space of time, but you also want it to look very coherent and consistent across the whole range. Here's what I do. I very much treat it like batch painting, but there's many reasons why I treat it like batch painting. So they're already prime brown and I choose my first second layer to put on and I do it all with dry brushing especially on terrain and what I'm doing is I'm just going across each piece and as soon as I've got all the colour in one piece I'm moving on to the next one. The reason for this is you get a technique and what you do is while you're doing it you do it the same okay if you have a break and you come back a day or two later even though you might be applying the same colour you might do it slightly heavier slightly less and it'll look different. So once I've done the first colour, I move on to the highlight and I do this across all the pieces again. But being that methodical with painting terrain pieces, it means that as you're learning on each piece, it will be consistent across them pieces. I hope that makes sense. 
When it comes to choosing colours, I stick to a very three triad colour basic. So like the primer, a base, a mid, and then like an extreme highlight. And the reason that I do this is so the colour palette's simple and I can do it in three passes. And once you've got the main bulk of the colour down on, say, the, the all the bone work that we're doing, I then move on to, like, the base of it. When I'm painting the base, I try and keep the similar sort of muted colours. So I'll go on with a grey with them being stones. But to highlight the stones up afterwards, I will use the similar beiges and creams that I've done on the bones. And it's just so you get like a very rough color across the whole piece. There is a slight difference, but it's not too much. And that means that when you're looking at it, it looks like it's one piece, not loads of bits put together. But one thing I will say as well with like 3D printed terrain, some of the stones are a little bit smooth. So if you're wanting to put some texture in there to break it up so it's not as smooth as the bone, just stipple on some highlights rather than just dry brushing them. Now with this being like a Battlefield Basics video, um, I'm going to be just using water-based washers. The reason I'm doing this is I want to show you that you can get a similar effect to using oils. Now bath it completely over the model. And while it's still wet through, dab off the highlights. And the reason that we're doing this is because it gives like a stippled effect. It adds a bit more texture and it also just speeds up the process of it drying and it doesn't take it down too dark. It doesn't mute and put a filter on. So you feel like you've got to do another layer of dry brushing. But what the wash also does is it ties all them rocks and bones and groundwork and stuff together to give you quite a nice finish and you get that done very quickly. Now, to add some more interest, obviously if you're gonna be using these on a board that you've got, use your ground covers from the boards. So if you've, if you've not got a board, obviously this is where you can go to town, but me, I'm just gonna make this to like a really dark sort of snowy terrain piece. The reason I'm doing this is I've got some games where I want to set in the snow, so it's the perfect opportunity for me to do this. And all I'm doing for the basin is I'm just getting some arid earth base ready and sticking that on. This even goes for the bigger terrain piece. I'm doing exactly the same steps on that as I'm doing on the smaller pieces. So it's consistent at the time. The only step that I'm doing slightly different here is I'm pouring the base ready on rather than sprinkling it. Once you've done that, give it a good seal, a matte scenic sealant. And this is to lock it in and dull it all down just a little bit. Once that's dry, we can put on some tufts. And these are just to add some height and variation and a bit more visual interest to the piece. And at this point, if you were wanting some very generic terrain that you were going to use across multiple tables, like a grassland table or a desert table or a muddy table, this is a very good place to leave it because they're quite isolated and none on their own and they wouldn't look too out of place on like a grass gaming table. Me, I've got a bit more of a theme in mind with it being undead and wanting it to be cold and snowy. So I'm going to add some snow to these just to make them look a bit more interesting. And how I add that snow is I just give them a good spray of matte scenic sealant from above. And then I just use the snow powder and I literally sprinkle this on by hand and create little piles here and there. But I don't overthink it. I just spread it on and let it stick where it wants to stick. And this gives you an awesome snowy terrain set that looks pretty great for minimal work. I got all of this done in literally a couple of hours. Now, while this is all drying, I even use the same principles of how I paint terrain, even on the models. So the only difference with batch painting models, so you get more of a consistent look. I choose like a couple of colors that I'm gonna use across all the models. So they might be painted differently, but at least when they're all together, they have a color or a couple of colors that tie them all together. And for painting models quickly, I tend to use a mix of contrast washers just to get the base colors down. And I'm picking three major colors and then chucking metallics on it. That's literally all I've done. And then I come in with a few layers of different dry brushing to bring the models up to a point where they look good to eye on the table. Now with speed painting, dry brushing is your friend. All the terrain and all the models have been painted with just two brushes, which was a size 11 brush and this dry brush. 
I absolutely love these two brushes for speed painting because I can get the bulk of the work done. Now with dry brushing, what I tend to do, I get that base color down with the, the contrast or wash, and then I give it like a white dry brush over the top. And then what I do is I use that base color again, but I dry brush that over. And where it's white, it actually makes obviously the green a little bit paler in them areas. It's sort of like dry brushing in reverse slightly. And the effects you get for just little work is great. And even using like the techniques where we put the wash on and stippled it off with a paper towel, I'm doing this on a model. I'm treating it like a piece of terrain. So literally the whole point of this video is guys, is if you want your stuff to be consistent and you want all your stuff to sort of tie and work together, even though it is all slightly different, base it the same and try and tie in the colors that you've used on other models across everything, even the terrain. And at least it looks like it's all come from the same world. It's all come from the same sort of area. This is why films have like a grade in color it sort of sets it and keeps it all together. And if it moves to a different place, that grade can change to a different place. And this is what we're doing with as miniatures. We're making the miniatures fit into the area by keeping the colors the same and consistent across all the pieces that we're doing. And if you want to take it that bit further, you can add bits of resin, puddles, anything like that. And if you want to do a bit of ice, this is a new quick way that I just thought I'd play with. It's just some UV resin with some snow powder mixed into it. And you can push that around with a brush so you can get the deep, thicker ice and then lay some more on top. Let that soak in a bit and then literally chuck it outside for five minutes to cure. And you've got a really cool little icy pond. Now guys, I know this is a very simple video and I know it's really back to basics, but I want to sort of hit home guys that you don't have to stress yourself out when it comes to terrain or even miniature painting. Me, I just slapdash everything and when it's all together, it comes together nicely. And if you're a gamer or a role player, you don't have to do a lot to have some terrain that's impressive. And to say that I painted all these models and all this terrain with a size 11 brush and a large dry brush. It's come together rather well. The only tips from this video that you really need to take on board is if you're doing a three, four, five step process, make sure you do that to each model at the same time. And that's how you can get the consistency across all the models. And when it comes to colors, if you want to tie your skeletons into your big guy, into your terrain, make sure you use them creams on the model and use them in the terrain. If you've got green on one model, tie a little bit of green in across all the models in some place or bone color. And that way you've set a theme of color across your entire terrain set and miniatures. So it really brings the world to life. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I've really enjoyed doing this because I've now got some cool little terrain pieces for role playing or even playing Kings of War. And I'd like to thank Cripple God Foundry for sponsoring this video. They do some awesome miniatures, awesome terrain pieces, and the fact that you could get all this stuff and more that I've used for as little as £10 a month is crazy. So go send your support, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. And I'll catch you for the next video. Love, love, love.